Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial. If you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast. And if you're out there and you love this podcast, please give us a rating and review on whatever platform you listen to us on. The more positive rating reviews that we get, the more that we actually are able to be seen by people who have never listened to us before. So if you want to help us grow and help us get this message out, please give us a rating and review however you listen to us. Today, we're going to be talking about how to step into your power. We're going to talk about decision making and we're going to talk about a lot of different things as far as fear and power go. And when I say your personal power, I don't mean power when you think about like a negative connotation. I mean that deep down inside of you, you are really fucking powerful. But are you bringing that out to the world or are you hiding? Are you hiding behind the world, behind society, behind what you're supposed to do, behind what your parents told you to do, behind not wanting to be seen? You have a whole lot of power inside of you. And what we want to talk about here today is how to step into that power and how to start making decisions that allow you to find that power and be more powerful. Because the most important decision that you can make majority of them are little teeny tiny small decisions throughout the day can come from one of two places. It can either come from fear or it can come from power. And when I say power, I mean personal power, like stepping into the best version of yourself. And if we look at it, we know it's very obvious. I've been there many times. I've still find myself doing this sometimes today is most of our decisions come from a place of fear. Most of our decisions, our thought process of whether we're going to do something or not do something, the first thing that usually comes up is all of the things that could happen that we don't want to happen. All of the things that could possibly go wrong. And so we literally go straight to fear and we start thinking about all the things that we don't want and we become paralyzed and we don't do shit. We don't do anything. We do absolutely nothing. And this is a, you know, I was watching a video one time and there was a guy that was on stage and he had somebody come up and he was talking about Okay, we've got two chairs. There's one chair here on the left. There's one chair here on the right. I want you to sit down in this chair and I want you to tell me and tell everybody else in the crowd what you don't want. And this person's like, okay, I don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this, 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 this. A laundry list of all of these things they don't want. And he said, cool. All right, now go ahead and switch chairs. Go to the other chair. And in this chair, you're going to tell me what you do want. So tell me everything that you do want. It was funny because the person's like, well, you know, I want to be happy. I want this. I, uh, I want this. I want this. And uh, well, I, I don't want this and I don't want this. And you notice that they go from what like what they don't want is very easy for them to rattle off a whole bunch of things. When they go to what they do want, they've got a couple things. And then slowly but surely, it almost always transitions to the person talking about what they don't want. We almost always in our brain will go straight to fear and focus on what we don't want. So you could say like, I want to grow a business. And you can start thinking about how amazing it could be. But then you start thinking about, well, what if I fail? What if I don't make money? What if I lose money? What if I go in debt? What if I lose my house? What if my children and I are homeless on the side of the road and we can't eat? Right? And it's like you literally go from like wanting to start a business to just kicking your dreams in the face. The problem is that most of us come from fear often. You know, and if you look back at your entire life, really think about this for a second. When you look back at your entire life, you know, if you're 45 years old right now, are most of the decisions that you've made in your life coming from personal power or fear? Did you take the safe route? Did you go get a degree because that's what you thought was safe? Did you go for a certain degree that you didn't want to because you thought that job was safe? Did you apply for that to work for the government or to work for this company because you thought that it was safe long-term? You know, for me, I know that a lot of my life you know, the first 26 years of my life, a lot of my decisions were made from fear until I realized that the decisions that were made from fear won't give me the life that I want. Like the, the life that you truly want deep down inside and all of the potential that you have that you could bring out to the world, you can't make decisions in fear to bring that out to the world. Decisions made from fear were keeping me in my comfort zone. Oh, I want to be safe. I just bought a new house. I want to make sure I could pay my bills. I want to make sure I could be fed. You know, I want to make sure I could save some money. I want to make sure I could still travel. I don't know if I could do that. I don't know if I could start my own business. I don't know if I could, you know what? I'll just go ahead and I'll get the safe route. I can make good money. I can make, I can be, I can be pretty good, you know, and I'll, I, maybe I'll get like 15 days of vacation per year. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Let me go that route. But why do we go to fear? Why does our brain almost always go to fear automatically? Because the brain is literally designed to keep you alive. Your brain does not give a damn about how successful you are, how much money you have, how much sex you have, what, how much money you have in your bank account, you know, where your, what your investments are, where you're traveling to this year. It doesn't care about any of those things. 
There's a part of your brain called the amygdala, and that is the part of your brain that literally creates fears even when there's nothing to fear in front of you. And so we have to know that our brain will automatically, almost always, default to negative. And then we start thinking about, oh my gosh, what are these people going to think of me? What if I fail? What if I get rejected? All of this. And that's why it's so important to develop self-awareness, like very, very clear self-awareness. I always say when people ask me, I've, I've been on podcasts before and they ask me like, if you could give the world one superpower, one gift, what would you want? I'm like extreme self-awareness. If everybody had extreme self-awareness, they would be better. They would treat people better. The world would be a million times better because they'd be aware of how their actions change the people around them as well. There'd be no war if people were self-aware of what, the, what their decisions did. And if you think about that, when you think about all of our decisions that are made from fear, how many great decisions have you heard of that somebody has achieved this great, massive, amazing, beautiful thing that changed the world or changed something that was just life-changing that came from a place of fear? You know, when you think about like Steve Jobs and they were sitting down and creating the iPhone. You know, I think the iPhone came out in like 2006, 2007, 2008, something like that. I remember what it was, but I remember when it came out. Do you think Steve Jobs and everybody in Apple was sitting around and they're like, okay, well, what if this doesn't work? No, it was like, we have to like forge through on a path that nobody knows. It's never been seen. You got to come from a place of personal power. We can do this. We're the company to do this. I'm the person to do this. How many, how many do you think came from a place of fear? Probably none. I would say no great decisions that have changed people's lives, but also the world came from a place of fear. And I don't mean fear like the fear of death or the fear of like, hey, I don't want to drive fast because I don't want to get into an accident accident. I mean, like where you have an opportunity to change your life, to make your, like, it's literally like a fork in the road and left you can go and it could be the same that has always been. And right is something vastly different. But instead of going for vastly different, instead of going out into the uncertainty, doing something you've never done before, risking it all, you decided to play small. You decided to take the safe route. You decided to stay in your comfort zone because the comfort zone is comfortable. And if you've been listening to my podcast long enough, I always say that the comfort zone is a place where your dreams go to die. Your dreams will die in your comfort zone. And you just give up on a big goal. Uh, it's easier not to do it. It's easier just to hang out. It's easier just to chill. You know, so many people listening right now, at one point in time, wanted to start a business, but they didn't. Where do you think that bit, you know, it's like six years ago, you wanted to start that business. You had that great idea. You were super passionate about it. But then you thought to yourself, like, I don't know if it's possible. What if I, what if I can't pay the bills? What if, what if it takes too much time? What if I lose my sleep? And then it goes into my actual day job. And you had this idea to start a business six years ago. But instead of stepping into your personal power, you stepped into a place of fear. Where could that business be right now, six years, almost 2,000 days later, where could that business be? How could it have changed your life? How vastly different could your life be if you decided to step off the ledge and just know that the parachute was going to open when you jumped off? Where could your life be now? It could be vastly different, couldn't it? What about in like investing into your personal development where you're like, you know what, I'm going to invest in my personal development, but oh man, like, I don't know, I'm, I want to go to this event, but you know, I, what if people look at me funny? What if I what if I get called on stage? You know, I, I don't know. I, you know what I'll do? I'll just save money instead. I won't develop, I won't, I won't step into my personal power. I won't go into personal development. There's so many decisions that we, you know, that you could be in a relationship with somebody, but you decided instead, oh, I, I'm afraid of being rejected. I'm not going to do it. And you could have a completely different life if you had just came from a place of personal power versus a place of fear. How many decisions have you made from a place of just trying to play it safe? There's less risk. There's less risk going this route. Like we always think that there's less risk just going this route. And we justify that there's less risk going this route. And so we decide to go down that route. But in life, if you don't risk anything, you're risking everything. In your life, if you don't risk anything, you are risking everything in your life. You're risking everything that you could be. How many world-changing moments came from a place of fear that changed the course of history? How many people do you look up to that have all of the life that you want, you look up to, you think that they're amazing, all of this? How many do you think 
got there because they decided to come from a place of fear? Probably none, like zero. How many great inventions came from a place of fear? How many great companies came from a place of fear? When you look at that, you start to realize that we make the majority of our decisions, most of us usually do through the majority of our lives, coming from a place of fear, taking a safe route. So what we should be focused on is making more decisions from a place of power, personal power, stepping into who you could be. And frankly, honestly, who you should be, like who you were put on this planet to be. Are you just going to be like everybody else? You weren't put on, you don't look like anybody else. You don't have the same fingerprint as everybody else. You were designed uniquely because you were supposed to be unique, not because you were supposed to go the same route as everybody else and just follow the rat race and do the same thing and not take risks and dive with, you know, a little bit extra money in the bank account, maybe a couple cool experiences and just living a pretty cool life. Is the risk for you to step into personal power, for you to step into the unknown? Is there risk? Absolutely. There's risk and you can focus on the risk and that risk can paralyze you and stop you from going and doing something. Or you could focus on what you could be, what you could do. Instead of focusing on your problems, you can also focus on possibility. Knowing that your brain will default to problems, you could also just decide, oh, there's my brain. It's going to problems. It's going to fear. Instead of being on problems, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to focus on possibility. I'm going to focus on what could happen if I decide to go that route. Because if you don't risk anything, you're risking everything. You know, it's kind of like the, the feeling I always tell people, it's like the gut feeling versus the brain. People always ask like, how do I develop my intuition? How do I get my gut feeling? Number one, everybody's got it. It's always there, but we just tend to not listen to it. And we don't listen to it for a really long time. You stop paying attention to it. There's the gut and there's the brain. The brain, once again, is designed to keep you alive. It's designed to keep you safe. And so you have this gut feeling of, you know what? I should start this business. I should ask that person out. I should decide to go to Africa and go on a safari instead of going for my next semester at school. I don't know what it is for you, but there's a gut feeling where you feel pulled towards something like you have. And the way to tell a gut feeling is usually think about the energy behind that feeling. Like if you have a feeling like you're feeling pulled towards something, and thinking about doing this thing is giving you energy. Like you have so much energy thinking about it. That's usually something that you're supposed to follow. And I always say your gut feeling, it's like your emotional compass. It knows what you're supposed to do. It knows you're supposed to go. You have to get good at listening, becoming quiet, shutting up, quieting the brain and feeling into something being like, what does my energy feel around this thing? Do I feel excited to go do this thing? because you have that gut feeling, but then you've also got your brain. So you'll have a gut feeling arise and it'll pop up and you'll be excited and be like, this is amazing. I should definitely do this. But then what does the brain do? Oh yeah, but no, you can't do that. So your gut feeling is almost immediate. It's almost always there. It's like right away you feel drawn, you feel pulled towards something. And then your brain tries to talk you out of everything that's out of your comfort zone because it wants to keep you safe. It doesn't know that there's no potential danger on the other side of that comfort zone. Everything that you want is going to first require you to make a decision from a place of power instead of a place of fear. So what do you need to do? You need to start becoming really self-aware. You need to start paying attention to your feelings, to, your, to, to where you're getting energy from. If you pay attention to your energy, you'll almost always be guided in the right direction. Like when I think about what I do, I get so much, like people are like, you work so much. I'm like, I don't feel like I'm working. Like this shit is fun for me. It's exciting. I get so much energy by sitting down and figuring people out and working with people and learning about people and learning about neurology and psychology and early childhood development. Like this shit lights me up. For some people listening, most people listening, it probably doesn't to do what I do. And that's fine. But like all I did was follow the energy. And when I followed the energy, was there a lot of fear? Fear? Fuck yeah, there was a lot of fear. There was a ton of fear. To leave my job to start a podcast back in 2015 when people didn't even know what podcasts were, that makes no sense. Like everybody knows what podcasts are, right? Everyone and their mom has started a podcast. And they're like, oh, I'm going to make a podcast about blah, blah, blah. Everyone has started a podcast. Back in 2015, when I used to tell people I was a podcaster, the response I got more back than anything else was, what is a podcast? So does it make any sense for me to go, I'm going to quit my job where I'm making 200 grand a year, over 200 grand a year. I'm going to quit that job and I'm going to do this podcasting thing that no one's ever heard of before. It made no logical sense. But for some reason, something deep down inside of me is like, you have to do this. Like this is, this is something that you're supposed to do. And so what did I do? I just followed the energy and I had to be aware of the energy. And then when the fear popped in, I need to say, you know, no, this, this feels right. I'm going to follow this thing that feels right. 
When you feel that feeling, you have to follow it. Otherwise, you're going to look back on your life and you're going to have massive regret. You're going to wait, wish that you made less decisions from fear. So noticing fear is good. Listening to the fear is bad. Like fear can keep you alive. So what do you do is number one, you have to become very self-aware of when you notice fear popping up. Take a step back. When you're in the jar, you can't read the label. So when you take a step back, you're like, okay, hold on. What am I feeling right now? <clears throat> Why am I feeling this? Is this actually something to fear? Am I focusing on problems or am I focusing on possibility? Oh, I'm focusing on problems. Okay, what is the possibility? What is what is the potential outcome that could come if I do follow this? It could be amazing. How could this change my life? So the first thing is we have to take a step back. We have to become very self-aware. The second thing is that, that's really good about this is this just showing you the edge of your comfort zone. You know, if you decide to take a leap and go outside of your comfort zone, you fast forward. Like right now, you fast forward five years from today and you step into your personal power and you make decisions not from fear, but out of your personal power, your life's going to be vastly different. If you continue to make your decisions out of fear though, and you fast forward in five years, you're not going to like where you are. You just will not like where you are if you continue to make decisions out of fear. But if you fast forward and you make decisions out of power, watch out because you're going to create some magic. You're going to change your life. You're going to change other people's life. You're going to change the little pocket of the world that you live in. And that's what you're here to do. Not to play small, but to do something amazing. And so you've got to, got to, got to realize there's two things that you could do at any point in time. Make decisions out of fear or make decisions out of personal power. Make decisions out of personal power and your life will change. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me at Rob Dial Jr. R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. And... If you love this podcast, you want to follow us on Instagram, you want some extra Mindset Mentor on your Instagram, go ahead and follow us on there as well. It's The Mindset Mentor Podcast. Once again, The Mindset Mentor Podcast on Instagram. And I'm going to leave it the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you, and I hope that you have an amazing day.